Welcome back to more Warhammer lore. Today's video will be on the Great Horned Rat. Now, unlike many of the other gods of the Warhammer world, there's very little recorded about the Great Horned One, for the Skaven often don't bother to record their own history, seeing it as uh, useless, for the only history worth recording is about themselves personally, and little is thought of their people as a whole. In this way, the Horned Rat is a reflection of his worshippers. There are also others that believe that the Great Horned Rat is just a proxy through which the other Chaos Gods act. Um, this is not unheard of in the Warhammer world, as the Ruinous Powers have many names and many cultures, but I do not believe this is the case. It is possible that the Horned One was in fact brought into being by one of these Ruinous Powers, but that is a story for another day. The Horned Rat is the supreme god of the Skaven and he allows no other gods before him. Though not affiliated with the Lords of Chaos, the Horned Rat is almost certainly a distant relative of those foul nebulous beings. He represents all things the Skaven are or wish to be, undying and eternally scheming. This cunning deity patiently awaits the day of the Great Ascendancy, when his children will swarm across the face of the world, devouring it from within. Entropy is his mantra, decay is his stock and trade. All things must rot, figuratively, or literally, and the Horned Rat and his offspring are the world reality of this simple truth. All Skaven revere the Horned Rat, none question his existence. Such respect is a product of fear, for the Horned Rat's eternal hunger does not discriminate between his verminous children and the dwellers of the surface world. Now unlike the majority of the gods in the Warhammer world, despite many who believe that the Horned Rat is indeed an aspect of Zincher Nurgle, the Great One is one of the few gods to have made his presence known by physically manifesting in this mortal world. This of course came at the price of a great ritual performed by the Grey Seers, the prophets of the Horned One, where 169 slaves were slaughtered to summon their deity. Through the Terran reality, the Horned Rat consumed the leader of the Grey Seers, as well as a hefty number of his verminous children. He physically reached through the tear and ate them. A god not only being seen by a mortal is rare amongst the races of Warhammer, but a god who literally eats his followers for misbehaving is altogether something else. Therefore, I believe that the Horned Rat is indeed his own deity, and a very powerful one at that. It is also of note that, despite what you would commonly think of, there are in fact other followers of the Horned Rat outside of the Skaven. In fact, there is a pretty decently sized cult um, dedicated to worshipping Skaven and the Empire named the Cult of the Yellow Fane. And these cults seem to have their roots back in the aftermath of the Black Plague that the Skaven unleashed on the Empire, which ultimately failed, but did in fact leave a mark on the race of men that is covered up to this day. Now I will cover more of this in my Skaven Society video, so we will move on from the filthy man things and get back to the Horned One. The Great Horned Rat does share many aspects of the other Ruinous Powers, but unlike the primary Chaos Gods, he tends to not outright support his worshippers. Indeed, despite the vast amounts of praise heaped upon him, he generally does not bestow any physical gifts, and the ones he does often can be misconstrued or simply not work in the way expected. Um, the Screaming Bell comes to mind, and it is, it is likely to decimate the enemies of the Ratmen, and just as likely to split the earth in two under friendly units' feet, ultimately killing them. However, the Skaven, being a highly superstitious lot, believe that every time they invoke his name and claim victory or spared a gruesome end, that the Horned One is watching over them. Of course, there is always the chance that this would have happened regardless of their prayer, and who is not to say that this is indeed the way that their god shows his favor? Um, a good example of this would be Thankwell, the infamous Grey Seer, whom is more likely to bring ruin upon his kin than their enemies. Thankwell, despite having failed countless times, appears to be favored greatly by the Horned Rat, because he has lived through so many battles and mishaps from botched assassinations to failed invasions and battles in which he was he always came out relatively unscathed. Of course, the same cannot be said for any Ratman following him, but those are minor details. This could all just be good luck, and it does appear that way to many, but maybe, just maybe, this is how the Horned Rat shows his favor, for the Horned One is known to help those who help themselves. 
and for this reason I believe it is essential that in order to grasp the many aspects of the horned rat as one deity, we will need to go into detail about his minions and not the gray seers or the plague priest, but the embodiments of his being and the great vermin lords or the demons of the horned one. A vermin lord is the supreme manifestation of the Skaven's sole demonic deity, the Horned Rat. These demons are by far the strongest and most fearsome the Under Empire has ever known. The vermin lords are thought to be the demonic forms of ancient lords of decay, warped by the influence of the Horned Rat into his mortal servants. A vermin lord is at once majestic and disgusting, a living icon of ruin, the ultimate scavenger. Although such a being towers in height, it is lithe and quick, its movements evoking the fluid yet twitchy scuttling of rats. Their heads are bedecked with the spiraling horn and sloughing flesh of the horned rat himself. Warpstone amulets and tomes decorate the vermin lord's leprous form, along with chunks of raw warpstone hammered into their flesh. Vermin lords are often seen armed with huge wicked looking glaives that are fully twice the height of a man, but their chisel teeth and sharp claws are easily capable of tearing a creature to pieces. Any onlooker finds that he cannot look away from the nightmarish creature, yet at the same time fervently hopes not to make eye contact. And this is wise, for even the passing attention of such an ancient and wicked being is enough to stop a man's heart. Few dare to meet a vermin lord's all-seeing gaze for even an instant, and none can hold it. A vermin lord is eternally calculating a myriad of interweaving plots, ever seeking the best path towards some desired end. The creature is never still, constantly pacing stopping to tilt its head as if sniffing for the future. When the time for action comes, however, the Vermin Lord manifests all the feral savagery of the Skaven race. Its rage is terrifying to behold, and few mortals can stand against it. The sinuous body contains the might and strength to challenge a greater demon, and lesser creatures are swept aside in droves. At need, a Vermin Lord can summon a powerful and wicked glaive, which it swings in deadly and unstoppable arcs. And now that you know what a vermin lord is, we should get into the types, which will give us insight into the great horned rat. The vermin lord deceiver. Perhaps the least seen of all vermin lords are the deceivers, the lords of assassins, the shadows that kill. This is as they prefer it. It is not their way to barge out upon the battlefield like some clumsy warlord. Instead, their power lies in stealth. They move in clouds of shadow, obscuring even those around them. Only when their intrigues are ripe will a vermin lord deceiver step out of the darkness to strike. Out of nowhere they appear, moving with blurring swiftness. Into their uplifted hands they summon forth triple bladed throwing stars. With a snap of the wrist, the vermin lord can fling the killing star, sending it to scythe down foes in a great circling arc. The flash of it passing can be seen, leaving decapitated victims and slicing off limbs in its wake. At the end of its flight, the vermin lord deceiver will snatch it out of midair and throw it again in quick succession. Such is their agility and the ability to rapidly displace themselves, that their creature can even throw their weapons and catch it from some completely different part of the battlefield. In close combat, the Vermin Lord Deceivers favor the Warp Stiletto, a stabbing weapon the length of a man. Its steeply accumented shape allows the blade to penetrate deep into a foe, where its toxic nature can do the most damage with great efficiency. Whilst common soldiers might batter each other ceaselessly, with only a swift thrust from the warp stiletto, a deceiver can fell any foe, no matter how large. This lord represents the more sneaky, bloodthirsty aspect of the horned rat, mostly embodied through Clan Eshin. Um, for the desire to stab a rival in the back is great upon the ratkin, even those not a part of the assassin's order. For this reason, the horned one is worshipped as a god of treachery and scheming for it takes both to catch one's foes by surprise. This aspect seems to also represent the Skaven's desire to believe they have the upper hand before ever committing any forces. I did say believe because often they are outmatched and either too egotistical or too proud to admit when they will lose. And now the Vermin Lord Corruptors. Also known as the Pestilent Reapers and the Colors of Civilization, Vermin Lord Corruptors are disease given form. They are surrounded by an aura of creeping sickness. All around them, life withers away. The spread of plague is their craft, and at their command are the worst maladies in the world. But with a malicious glance, a vermin lord corruptor can cause foes to break out in the rot eye pox, the oozing twitch, or the black plague. There are none more malignant nor more uncompromising than these infested terrors. Of all the vermin lords, the corruptors have severely decayed and consequently the least elaborate horns. 
though simply mentioning this to one of these repulsive rat demons is certain to begin a vendetta that will last an eternity. Although not above a degree of skulking, corruptors are more likely than any other vermin lord to be at the forefront of battle. There are zealots who incite extreme hate in others, proving especially effective in goading plague monks into an extreme frenzy. More sorcerous than most of their kin, the corruptors can call down plague storms, shrivel skin, or vomit forth impossible geysers of noxious poison. Should any foe live long enough to close with a vermin lord corruptor, their battle has only just begun. Living upon the greasy pelt of a corruptor can be in any number of tiny parasites, sting fleas, or three-eyed mites. They bite all who approach and infect their prey with bubonics, the flesh-bubbling disease that rots foes in minutes. As the foes reel, the vermin lord corruptor will then summon forth a pair of plague reaper sickle blades, which it will use to eviscerate its enemy with savage fury. This vermin lord seems to represent the horns one's affiliation with plague and decay. This is also why the worship of clan pestilence appears to be tolerated by the deity, despite being labeled as heretics by the grey seers, as they are the only clan to worship the horned one in this decayed way. This is also a near verbatim relation to Grandfather Nurgle of the Chaos Pantheon. From the festering diseases to the zealous actions of his followers, I would not blame you for believing the Horned Rat was one of the aspects of Nurgle, and perhaps he is to a lesser degree, but his many other aspects are what set him apart and ultimately make him a unique deity. Vermin Lord Warbringers, also known as Tyrants of Battle and the Great Stabber Slicers. The Vermin Lord Warbringers are the most commonly seen of the Rat Demons, and of all the Vermin Lords, none are so full of themselves and self-posturing. Warbringers have a fondness for dramatic entrances such as arriving in clouds of smoke before mustered hordes of Skaven. They stride battle lines, towering over the Ratmen, who cower in the presence of such majestic and terrible beings. Whenever possible, they strike heroic poses, with their sinuously curving horns thrust regally outwards, and their weapons glinting in the fires of battle. All of this preening is not merely pretentious on the part of these vermin lords, however. Skaven, particularly Cran Rats and Storm Vermin, rally to the awe-inspiring sight of these godly creatures. Thus can the presence of such a vermin lord steady even the most craven force. With each colossal stride or dramatic whip of the tail, the chittering tumult rising from the fighting hordes increases in its intensity. Skaven who bask in that verminous presence for long enough will be overcome by a bloodthirsty, teeth-snapping rage that they long to unleash upon their foe. The Warbringers are not zealous about leading from the front. They far prefer to stride amongst a seething tide of ratmen, for they draw strength from being amongst their mortal underlings. When they reach the front line, few mortal creatures can match their speed or strength, and they cut down whole ranks at a time with great sweeps from their doom glaives. When facing larger enemies, or delivering a dramatic coup de grace, a Warbringer will manifest an enormous spike's fist, driving it through the foe and tearing out his entrails for all to see. These demons appear to have quite a bit in common with Cornite demons, especially in being able to inspire that, uh, that bloodthirsty aura about themselves that really gets everyone hyped up and keeps them fighting. But at the same time, there's still that kind of cowardly Skaven presence, which can be seen um, represented through not wanting to lead from the front, so kind of want to have someone else take the charge for you. You will get all the glory, though, instead. And for this reason, they tend to represent the pride and ego of the Great Horned One, for he wishes all to know it is he whom is their master, and for that reason, he tolerates no other Skaven deities out of jealousy. This aspect most commonly affects his children in the constant need to move up in society and gain more prestige and just have more things, um, to wish for all to know that it is they who are better than them. This appears to be the main driving force behind Quick Headtaker. Well, kind of. Um, we will be getting more into depth in Quick and his psychology in my Quick Headtaker video. Be on the lookout for that. The Vermin Lord Warp Seer, also known as the Lords of Black Lightning and the Great Manipulators, the Vermin Lord Warp Seers are the most inscrutable of all the rat demons. Great leaders and visionaries, they are often found at the center of the most complex plots. All vermin lords are manipulative, but the warp seers bring beguilement to new levels. Every syllable whispered and every subtle nuance has been crafted to influence an endgame that they alone can fathom. 
When a vermin lord warp seer arrives in the world, it does so not with a plan, but with dozens, even hundreds of plots and intrigues. And it is not through words and schemes alone that the vermin lord warp seer will work its wiles. When it comes to the arcane arts, the warp seers wield great power. All vermin lords can hurl black lightning, but when a warp seer does so, it is not lone bolts they cast, but vast arcing chains of destruction. With the stomp of their clawed foot, they can open rifts, crack foundations, and topple the structures of the so-called civilized world. At their command, the vermin lord of the world swarm, forming tides, waves of rats. So powerful is their call that rodent kind from the shadow realms join the pack, and nothing can stop their chiseled teeth, for they are able to gnaw a soul from a body in seconds. Vermin lord warp seers alone can summon forth a scry orb of enormous proportions. The sphere can be used to gaze into all possible futures, allowing the vermin lord to know the unknowable and see that which is beyond sight. A powerful boon as they plot the fall of their enemies and the fate of their allies. At times of great need, the vermin lord warp seer can hurl at the swinging orb as a weapon, its destruction releasing a miasma of multiple futures and fumes of purest warp stone. Those caught within the blast are driven mad, reduced to utter feeble-mindedness by the nightmare visions they are gifted. Now this version of the Vermin Lord embodies the Horned Rat unique form of magic he has gifted his followers, as well as the never-ending schemes and paranoid nature of, of himself, as well as his minions. This bleeds into his followers, especially the Grey Seers, who see their magic as a blessing to all those they inflict it upon, and are constantly plotting on usurping their elder positions. So much so that often the final test of a Grey Seer is when he finally outsmarts and eats his predecessor. The great affiliation with magic and scheming is also another reason why the Horned One is associated with Zinch, as the Lord of Change is also a Lord of Magic and the patron of Dark Sorcery, which the Skaven appear to use in great abundance. The final type of Vermin Lord is the Exalted Vermin Lord. Even more dangerous and intractable than their nightmare kin, they demand the death not of mere sacrifices or the carrion of the battlefield as their due, but rather the destruction of the entire cities and the ruination of nations for their pleasure before their powers wedded to any cause. Even that of the great lords of decay, being a corporeal manifestation of the malignity of the horned rat, all of the exalted vermin lords' attacks are magical. He wields a dire glaive and can unleash a cascade of withering green flame that corrodes metal and blisters flesh. This final vermin lord is a great representation for the undying need to consume and achieve great feats. This aspect is seen most obviously in the compulsion the plans of the Horned One often involves in despoiling and dominating the races of the Sorford world, as well as the uh, dwarfs. In fact, you could say this is the Great Horn One's most exaggerated trait, and therefore the Exalted Vermin Lord is the closest to them in that, in that aspect. For it is this need to despoil that drives every scheme he puts into place, and is the ultimate goal he has set for his minions to achieve. Now, I know I've been droning on and on about these Vermin Lords, but I just feel like they help make the point of the Great Horn Brat being a very unique chaos deity. Now he is a chaos deity, but I don't think he is a representation of the other chaos gods. He is his own god, and a very powerful one, especially being worshipped by so many followers, being the Skaven, as they are so numerous, they're beyond counting, and they might even be the most numerous beings in the Warhammer world, period. Like if you add it up, all of the races together, you might not even come close to the Skaven's numbers, and therefore that's all the more favor and power that the Horned Rat has in the Realms of Chaos, because that's how the ranking system kind of works. But in summary, the Horned Rat is two parts Zinch, one part Nurgle, apparently. Throw in a little dash of corn and maybe a little bit of Slanesh in there for the whole achieving perfection kind of aspect. And then you get the Horned Rat. He's kind of amalgamation of all the Chaos Gods put into one. He is a very unique and mysterious deity. But that's only fitting for the Skaven. I mean, because Ratmen don't exist after all. <laughs> and with that, I will we will close out this lore video on the Great Horned Rat. I would like to say a personal thank you to everybody 
watching the content, everybody um, liking and subscribing. I greatly appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. And I will keep making more videos if you just keep giving me support. So with that being said, look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. And have a good day.